Good morning, everyone. Welcome today to Facebook Live's Identity Network page. I hope everyone's having a great day today, and hope everyone had a great weekend. And before I get started, I'm going to wait on people to get on board this morning. And I know many of you are getting just now the notifications for um, for the for this Facebook Live. And so as you get on board, I'll, I'll let me know in the news feed you're on board today, so I can say to you guys and wanted to. Um, thank God for every one of you, you know, in our lives, and I hope everyone is safe. You know, I think even I'll just sort of talk for a minute before you guys get on board this morning. And hey, good morning, Diane. As I'm this on many platforms as far as social media as well. So, um, but I wanted to take a moment before we actually get started and say that I know that as a nation here in America, and I know as a people, we are at this critical place right now. Um, you know, coming forth worldwide with a pandemic of, you know, the coronavirus, the COVID-19, then dealing with what we're dealing with. Hey, good morning, guys. As you get on board, definitely say it to me. And then dealing with a lot of the um, the situations, you know, as far as the murder of George Floyd, which is flat out murder. I mean, I, I don't mind calling it out. It was flat out murder, flat out racism, and it's a, it's a horrible, horrible thing that this still exists today in 2020 in our country, much less the world. And, and it's heartbreaking. It's uh, it's it's disgusting. To be honest with you, that we would have people that would actually treat people like that, and that would cause someone to actually suffocate to death. So it's been a tragedy uh, of as as we know from what we've been through uh, as a nation, and actually seeing and knowing the whole world is watching us, and it's affecting people in Europe. It's affecting people I think in Sweden, Norway, and so we've seen a lot of effects of the racism and the flat out murder that we're seeing take place today with people like George George Floyd, which I would definitely say, as always, let's continue to pray for his family. Let's continue to pray for, you know, uh, our nation. Pray for people. Pray for people. They get the hatred out of their heart and the racism out of their heart, and uh, you know. It's a sad thing, and and I think you know someone asked me. I'll just sort of say this first before I get into the um, the teaching today on creating your future. But someone asked me the other day. They said, um, you know, um, what do you think about all the uh, the disruption that's happening in the streets? You know, from the um, uh, the crime, the looting, the whole works. You know, the catching buildings on fire. And I'm not for that because I think destruction is totally not of God. You know, whatsoever. I totally disagree with that. But I also will say. I think when you have a people that are really sick and tired and just of being sick and tired of racism and judgmentalism, you know, uh, upon all people, first of all, you know, uh, because it's not just black lives that matter. It's every life that matters. And, you know, I think that's where we have to say that sometimes you push people to the limit that has to be able to feel as if they have to take a stand by maybe doing something to that measure, uh, you know, because they want to be heard. You know, we can look all through history where things happen because of it. I'm not for it by far, but, um, but you know, I see where history has repeated itself with any type of minority group that has come into that place where, you know, sometimes disruption just has to, I won't say has to happen, but happens to get people's attention, to get our government's attention, to get our, you know, our police's attention, uh, uh, attention and everyone else's. And so I'm not for destruction by far. I'm totally anti against it, but I do see where people are coming from, you know, where they just, they're sick and tired of it. You know, and also I'll make this, I'll probably one of the few people in Christianity and the prophetic move that will say this, you know, um, I don't care if someone, you know, is, is, is black, European. I don't care if they're gay. I don't care if they're straight. I don't care if they're whatever. I don't care if they're Asian. I don't care. People are people. And one thing I will say about Christianity is when Christianity comes to a place where if you're going to claim Christianity, this is my, my soapbox for the moment before I get into this. If you're going to claim Christianity and you treat anyone at all, of it, it, whether it may be a different lifestyle from you, whether a different color from you, I'm going to say if you do, shame on you. You're completely in error and you're completely in sin and wrong because everyone is made in the image and likeness of God. I know there's been debates on, well, are people, yes, everyone on planet earth is made in his image and likeness and, and you know, uh, of God. And everyone deserves to be treated with love, respect, and honor and humanity. I mean, that's just what we do with humanity. Every, everyone deserves to be treated with love, respect, and honor. Everyone does. I don't care if you think they're horrible, rotten, everyone is made in his image and likeness. And so it, whatever it takes to be able to break through this disgusting thing of racism or this disgusting thing of anyone else, no matter what lifestyle or what color they are, for God's sake, it's, I want somebody to say, church, love of God, grow up, for God's sake. You know, start maturing and grow up, you know, and get into the place where you love people. You know, and when people, and, and here's where I want to say this before I get into the teaching. If you disagree with someone of how they're living, guess what? It's none of your business. 
I mean, let's just be blunt about it. It is none of my business how somebody else lives. Because for me to point fingers and say they're wrong, please, I want, honestly, grow up, you know? I know I'm on my soapbox today because I just can't tolerate it. I can't, I can't handle this, 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 this thing on all, the, all, the, all these phobias. It just drives me insane. And so, so I don't care what a person's practicing, what they are, or who they are, or what color they are. If you tend to treat them bad, then I'm sorry, you are in error, and I will be the first prophet to tell you that. You are in the wrong, and God will not tolerate it, and he will not stand up for you in that area, in that, in that area of your life. So I'm going to say, if you choose a side, you know what your problem is? Is you choose a side, you're the most prideful, egotistical person I know. Because it's not about choosing sides, it's about loving humanity. If you've done it the least of these, and by the way, the least of these is not Christian people. It's not black people, Asian people, straight people, gay people. I don't care. If you've done least of these, you've done it unto me. So I don't care what you disagree with, what you don't like, or who you don't like. That's Jesus. So get off your soapbox, love people, treat everyone the same as you do your pastor. You know, pe people, I don't mean this bad, people will brown nose their pastors any day of the week, which I hate that phrase, but they will any day, week, any day of the week, but yet they won't treat other people that don't go to church and people who are, uh, you know, not their way of living bad. And I'm thinking, which one do you think is Jesus? It's the one in the streets. Jesus made it plain. It's the prisons. It's the one in the prisons. It's the one in the streets. I mean, you know, it's the one that's naked. You know, it's the one that doesn't like, the, that lives a lifestyle you don't like. It's the one that had different, different color than what you have. Those are Jesus. And so when you done so when that cop did that to George Floyd, he did it unto Jesus. And I don't care if George Floyd, I actually heard he was a Christian, but you know, I don't care if he's a Satanist. I don't care if he robbed. I don't care if he stole. I don't care if he did whatever. You do not treat people to the place of death and murder. End of discussion. I don't tolerate that. And, and, and when Christians t contact me and ask me about, well, what about this person over here in this lifestyle? What about this person over here, you know, living in, the, in this place in Africa? And I said, well, you know, here's the deal. It's none of your business. It's none of your business. Keep your nose, your belongs on your own face and love people. I mean, I, I'm just being blunt. I'm sorry for being so blunt today, but that's just how life is. It's none of your business how people live their life. You're commanded to love and honor and respect people. Bottom line, be the light that Christ has called you to be and just let your light blind them with your integrity and your love and your excellence. And just sometimes it's the best just to keep your mouth shut. That's just the truth. That's the bottom line of the truth. So that's what I want to touch on before I get into my teaching. All right, I love all you guys. I really do. But that is, that is my pet peeve because someone lost their lives out of stupidity, ignorance, hatred, racism. Uh, and it, it, just, it just makes me sick to my stomach. It really does. Um, you know, and so I don't blame people for actually for disrupting right now. I, I, I can't. I'm not for it, but, I'm, but, I'm, but I'm, I don't blame them because it's enough's enough. Enough. Amen. And you can see all through history, by the way, where any revolution took place. Somebody pointed this out to me the other day that, you know, sometimes it just pushes people to the place of shock factors to get our attention. You know what? I mean, it's sad and I hate it, but whatever it takes to get you or your attention and everyone else's attention to get off these things, you know what? Hey, I, I, I would just say just pray for them, you know, pray for them that God changes their heart quickly. Amen. So there is my soapbox today. I love you guys so much. Let's start on the teaching today. All right. So, I love it. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about today, creating your soul map, the combo, only because of the fact that it's a really huge, thick book, manifesting a vision board and, and really a vision for your life because everybody is at a place where, um, everybody's at a place right now where we are taking, we're at this catalyst of a paradigm shift. We are literally at this place where um, we have to look and understand you know what? I, um, I've got to change because we see the universe changing. We see creation changing. We see, we're seeing where things are shifting. I mean, my gosh, listen to me now, folks. If, if, if this racism and this, you know, uh, all these phobias against people of other lifestyles and these, you know, uh, viruses, I mean, if these are not enough to wake us up, for God's sake, folks, you know, I mean, the hatred in our hearts. So let's shift and change for the love and let's create a, a life worth living. Let's create a future where we can be the example to people, you know? Um, you know, I, let me, I don't know who this is for. I don't, I don't know who this is for, but I'll tell you this. I am totally not a conspiracy theorist, you know, person whatsoever. I don't bury my head in the sand either, but I want to say this as well real quick, okay? Is I'm not a conspiracy theorist person. I don't believe in all this I, this is just me. I don't believe in all the underground stuff people believe in. It's their, if they're right to believe in it, but I don't believe in that because to me, it's like I don't have time to waste my energy on all this junk, you know, of was somebody really this? Was somebody, I, I'm just like, really, folks, focus on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. 
and keeping those where it belongs. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen from the choir? The choir. You can tell it's still in my blood this morning. So anyway, so creating your your, your soul map. Um, my staff is going to put actually the, the link on here in a minute to creating your soul map, the book and the workbook. I want to encourage you, each one of you to get it because of the fact I'm, I'm a person where I've studied for years on the details, not just how to create a vision board, but the details of the in-depthness actually of that, which means the part that really needs to be able to to, to where your soul is illuminated by the will of God, by the power of God, by the by the understanding of what God has for you within your life. And so within this book, Creating Your Soul Map, and then the combo book, which actually this is probably the, the visionary workbook. It's probably the thickest workbook I've put out so far because I go into detail with all this stuff. One of the things I deal with in, in Creating Your Soul Map, let me put it up here real quick so you guys can see it. Creating Your Soul Map book and workbook. Okay, I want to encourage all of you to get it once again. But one of the things I, uh, that I, I wrote in the book, actually, is I'm teaching people how to write down things. And I teach them why it's important for us to write down our vision. Why is it important to write down dreams? Why is it important? There's a power within writing, and most people don't even know it. So I put in here the secrets of really the empowerment of writing and why it's why we have hands to write. Think about it. Have you ever questioned why on earth we have hands to write? Why can't we just use our mouth to speak? Why would God make, the, make give us the ability to write something and to learn how to write? Because there's a secret in the power of writing, and most people don't know that. So I put that in the book as well to where you understand. One of the things I also put in uh, creating your soul map com uh, combo of the book and the workbook is I also put in here how to make plans. You know, one of the things I notice about people is they think, you know, if I can just... Um, remember it or I'm going to I'm going to copy their plan or I'm going to hear this one step one step two step three for my pastor or anybody else so I can create a plan. Most people don't know why it's important to create a plan. And yes, we know that without a vision the people perish, but the thing is we don't understand a lot of people don't understand exactly why we have to make it plain. Think about that. Why do I have to make it plain to me? Because it deals with your soul, your spirit, and your body how subconsciously you've got to awaken. The Bible says awakest thou who sleeps and slumbers, which means it awakes a part of your subconscious because you have to make it plain. When it's made plain to you, that means you've awakened your subconscious to that reality that it is actually a truth and it's a re it's a, it's a reality for you. And that's when think about it. That's when the Spirit of God, like in Genesis, hovers over the waters. Remember in Genesis where it says the Spirit of God hovered over the waters and God said, let there be light? Well, your body is made up of the majority of water. Think about that. Did you? Here's a great revelation for many of you. So a lot of people actually, well, not everybody, everyone is made up of water. And there's more water in our being than anything in this, in this world of matter. And so because of that, why does the Holy Spirit come upon us? Because the same Holy Spirit that came upon the waters in Genesis that hovered over the waters and then, then God spoke, let there be light, is the same Holy Spirit that hovers over our waters of our beingness. Think about that. And speaks a life on a daily basis to us. And so we have to be able to make it plain. So the Holy Spirit is sort of breathing over us. Can I use another term? The Holy Spirit's breathing over us, impregnating us with an awakening until we have the vision made plain to us. Think about that. So I put in here why it's important to make your vision plain. Why is it important to make your future plain? You know, the... the um the combo set I have on the website right now, which is it's selling like crazy. In fact, we've already sold out, of, I think, two of our books. We're waiting for the rest of them to come in today or tomorrow, which was creating uh, uh, Power to Create Package. It is boomed because people are wanting to know, do I have authority over my future? Can I actually you know, play a role in creating my life? Or, or is everything just on automatic by God and I just sort of whiz through life and just don't worry about it? No. You know, so there's an importance to understanding why you need to be a part of your own life. Why is it important for you to begin to create your life? And why is it important to be able to have a saying in your life? Think about that. So that's where we have to begin to really look at our lives and understand, you know, do I really have a say-so? And if I have a say-so, by what means do I carry it out with? And so that's why it's important in the book that I made it uh, plain to make your vision plain. And another part of the, the, the chapter in creating your soul map with the book and the workbook that I, that the links on here for my, for my staff is also, I, I talk about the metaphysics in creation. Now you might say metaphysics, that sounds like a new age term, metaphysics in creation. And I deal with the aspects of different realms in the spirit. There's different realms outside of the natural in which we see or feel. Think about that. You have, you, it's all through the scriptures. So I want to talk to you about that aspect in the book of basically 
how metaphysically we could say it or spiritually or the supernatural whatever whatever word you want to use with it there is a um a behind the scenes look at this taking place so it's important that you cultivate your vision it's important that you go back and by the way for my friends on here Ruth as well that's on here I love me some Ruth Cooper um go back if you get a chance Ruth and listen to the very beginning I deal with a lot of stuff dealing with George Floyd as well I figured I know you a woman of justice so I wanted to call you out for a minute to tell you about that I think you'll enjoy it but behind the scenes of our vision uh, of making it plain to us. And it takes a while to make it plain. I want everybody to understand something. Creating a vision for your life doesn't mean you just, I'm going to write it down today and wow, that's it. Here it is. I'm just going to stand on it, confess it, decree it. No, there's a lot that deals with the conscious and the subconscious in our brain, right? And so there's a lot there to know when the Bible says to make it plain to yourself. So it takes a while for you to evolve into making it plain with inside of yourself. And most people don't realize that there actually is an awakening that takes place before things are actually made known to you or made plain to you, all right? So when even God gives you good things that flow down from the Father of lights and in him there's no shadow of turning, like the Bible says, that means as the good things come into you, it doesn't mean automatically you just, you know, zap it, you know, automatically, wham, bam, you know, here, there it is, I get it. No, sometimes it takes a while for revelation to kick in. There's an unfolding to revelation. Why is that? Because God wants you to experience the journey through your unfolding, and that's where people miss it. There's an experience that you have to experience. You cannot avoid your experience. When people say, I want to meet the right man, I want to meet the right woman, you know, I don't want to date around, then you're disrespecting your experience. You were created to have experience. Your experience is your journey, and it's important that you honor the power of your experience and your journey so that it can be made known to you, so that it can be made plain to you, so that it'll get embedded in your subconscious with you, and your conscious will begin to carry it out. See, just because you think you know it doesn't mean you know it. Revelation is not information. Information is not, not revelation. When people say to me, oh, I've got it. I get it. I see it. I see it. I see it. A lot of times, a lot, most that's why God did not allow us to get it when we when we hear it. Because faith comes by hearing and hear by the word of the Lord. And if you look in the original language, it actually says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. There's a repetitiveness to that. And so it takes a while for your faith to kick in, to to jumpstart you, to, to get the information you transformed into revelation. So not everything with you has a revelation. For example, if someone is in Embedded, let's say, for example, in deep, we'll say sin as far as maybe lust or pornography, or whatever. When someone's embedded deep in that, it doesn't just take automatically where the next day you wake up, you're like, oh, hallelujah, praise God. I'm, I'm never going to do that again. Been doing it for five years. I've been embedded in that type of culture, but I'm, I'm no, not wor no worries with me. Why? Because you have, to, you have to continuously renew your mind. You have to continuously fight the good fight of faith. There's always a resistance there. And with the resistance comes a strength. With the strength of the information of trying not to do that anymore, becomes it turns into a revelation. So unless you have revelation, so when people say, how are you doing, how are you doing, how are you doing, it doesn't mean they're doubting you. It means that, that they understand that your information is still fresh and new. Until your information is, is transformed or metamorphosized into revelation for you to say, oh my God, I get it why I don't need to do this. I get it how I don't need to do this. I, don't, I get it when, which is now, I don't need to do this. So when you understand why you don't need to do it, and and the revelation begins to unfold, you you get you build up more strength. You build up more tolerance in the sense of, let me put it this way when I say tolerance, is, is I can tolerate now um, when I do see something that I don't need it anymore. I can tolerate the fact that I'm not going to hide my head in the sand, that if I see it now, because of my revelation, I block it all out to where if I see it, I'm not going to run in fear. I can say, I don't want that anymore. I don't need that anymore. I see it for what it is. I run the, the opposite direction because I repent, which means repent means what? Turn the opposite direction. That's all it means. You know, and so you shift your paradigm and to see it from a different point of view or, or go the opposite direction. So therefore, when information is transformed and transmuted into revelation, what that means is I've got it. Now I see it. It's in my subconscious, so I make it plain to me. Are you with me? So that's where you have to begin to understand that just because you see it doesn't mean you automatically see it. If you have an eye to see and an ear to hear, then you're then you're going deeper into the vision and you'll see it from a deeper point of view and an in-depth part that you haven't seen it before. So therefore, does experience matter? Yes. Does experience matter that you date? Yes. Does experience matter that you um, make your vision plain and sometimes just sort of... Uh, 
Oh, well, I'm, how can I say this in a good, healthy way? You have to sometimes just marinate in it, which mar if you don't know what the word marinate is for some people in here, marinate basically means that you have to let the meat sort of marinate within, you know, toward the meat absorbs, you know, like the juices of it, you know, of what you're trying to do. So it means sort of sit on it for a while, ponder on it. You know, don't be in a hurry, you know, to 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 get out of it, okay? So you have to sit in it for a while, right? And so you have to make your, your vision plain. So I put the details of that within this in the in the book that deals with the different types of how to make it plain to you, how to cultivate a vision. Why do I need to cultivate that? That way it can turn into revelation that I need because revelation is where your empowerment is, not information. Information is just your step first stepping stone that gets you to the transformation of your experience and your journey to get you to the place of revelation. How many of you just got that, all right? So, then within the within my book, Creating Your Soul Map Combo of the book and the workbook, I also deal with things such as the body, I mean, the, the mind-body connection. When you don't believe you're connected and you think my soul is different from my body or my spirit is different from my body or my spirit is different from my soul, when you come to the illusion that one is more important than the other and not that all three of them are equally as important, then when you until you come into the connectiveness of body soul connection then you understand how your body is affected by your soul your health is affected by your soul your emotions are affecting your body your thinking your consciousness of the mind affects your body so there is a huge mind and mind and uh, excuse me uh, body soul connection huge one they actually inter intertwingle and, and excuse me uh, inter intermingle with one another constantly and so when you feel that religious mindset is, oh, I'm separate, praise the Lord, then what happens is you haven't come into revelation, you've digressed in separation. And God doesn't deal, deal in separations or divisions. He deals with line upon line, precept upon precept, upon precept which means he, he, he deals with building up, building up the kingdom, building up who you are. You know, I wish of all things you prosper and be in, be in good health even as your soul prospers. That means the same thing. If you're not prospering your soul and your body, then you know what? It's not doing you any good. If you're severely overweight and yet you think you think soulishly, you know, my emotions are intact, you're, you're off balance. The Bible says a false balance is an abomination before the Lord. That's what it says. It literally says that a false balance is an abomination before the Lord. Some translation says a, a, a faulty um, a, a weight of which scales and balances is an abomination, which means when you are not prospering in your body like you are in your soul and prospering means aligning to the healthiness in which you need okay well that's my that's jeremy 101 so when your body's prospering which means you're getting into a place of, of maybe whatever it means to you to look fit or to be healthy, no matter what that looks like for you. And your soul's prospering emotion where you've got it together a little bit more. You're getting your emotions intact. You're, 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 you're paying attention. And your spirit is aligned with the Word of God, the eternal part of who you are. When you align those three, there's nothing that will stop you. There's nothing. But when your soul uh, catches a promise and runs with it and leaves your your, your spirit and your body behind, you're out of kilter. You're out of balance. You're, 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 you're walking in a, an abomination. And abomination does not mean what everybody thinks it means, by the way. Okay, I'm just going to make that very plain. You need to do a word study on abomination. It doesn't mean what everybody thinks it means. Okay, maybe I'll talk to you guys about that another day. But but it's not. It's definitely not a positive, but it's not a severely, uh, well, it's a bad thing, but it's not what people think it is. We'll put it that way. So, so when you are out of alignment, body, soul, and spirit, what it means is you can never truly prosper in one area of your life or just another area. You have to prosper even as your soul prospers, which means you got to prosper as a triune being. Triune means body, soul, spirit, which means you're one. The three are one, one and three, just like the Holy Spirit, you know, and the Father and the Son. So when you see that, it's a place of understanding. And I make this plain in my book, Creating Your Soul Map, where you see where I connect the two of body and soul. Because because if you don't see it, you'll never you'll never obtain the fullness of, of wholeness that you become. All right, you get that. So, um, awesome. So, another thing I, uh, before I close on this matter, the other th another thing I talk about in, in uh, creating your soul map combo, which once again we got the link up here. I want you each one of you to begin to click on that. Ah, oh, Pamela, it just hit me. Pamela Pratt, I just remembered your email you sent me. I need to work on. Ah, oh, so sorry. Pamela's my friend, my teacher, and helped me in some areas. Thank God for her. So anyway, so. 
It's going to show a little backwards. I'm so sorry, guys. I didn't fix the camera like I should have. Creating your soul map, workbook, and, and, and book. But I want you to be able to, to uh, go today and get this uh, combination because it's going to help you guys. One more last point I want to talk about is um, is the abundant life. Okay. Now, when I say abundant life, you might say, yeah, yeah, we get that. No. Abundant life deals with the power once again, of you coming into co the connectiveness of body, soul, spirit, okay? And so what I talk about is not just how to create a vision board. Here's where the misconception. I don't just talk about how to create a vision board. What I talk about is how to create the vision, the blueprint for your life, for your lifestyle, the, the, the blueprint in which it is sort of tattooed upon your beingness of here's my vision, here's my purpose, here's my destiny, here's my future. This is the way walk in it, Okay. This is where you have to begin to really understand that, okay? So I want each one of you to begin to go right now and, um, and order this right now, okay? The combo, creating your soul map combo. It'll be a blessing to each one of you, and I'll make sure I have it uh, uploaded on all the social medias as well because I want you guys to get involved in your life. Okay, your life was created to get involved with, your life was created to live out, your life was created to experience, your life was created to explore, your life was created to journey out on faith, and, and guess what? Sometimes doubt and faith sometimes can work together. You might say, wait a minute, Jeremy. Yes, because you won't know faith until you understand, and understand doubt. You wouldn't understand doubt unless you understand faith. If you don't understand the, the, the polarization of the, of, of the diversities of these things, you'll never really grasp what your life looks like. So I'm going to encourage you right now to go right now and find find the place where you can order these because I want you guys to download either the ebooks or the book and the workbook or go ahead and order the book and the workbook and I'll go and autograph it for you guys. I want you guys to live your life to the fullness. I want you to be able to live it loud. I want you to begin to have everything everything you need on the blueprints of your life, the outline of your life, in every which way, because you deserve that. You owe it to yourself. Don't just invest in other people. You owe it to yourself to invest within yourself to begin to jettison yourself into the future. Jettison means like to push, to just throw it into. So to jettison yourself in the future, to put yourself in the future by creating your now moment. And I'm going to tell you how to do it, okay? I have some of these left right now in stock. Go and order them. Creating your soul map, book and workbook. Order right now, okay? I want you guys to be blessed by it. Um, I don't have um, the Sears book right now because we're completely sold out of all of them. Uh, I'll have them, have them back in, I think, tomorrow. So I couldn't even show you one, one book of it because we don't even have one book in stock. So if you want to order that as well, order those. But definitely get your Creating Your Soul Map combo today, all right? It's on the website of identitynetwork.net, Creating Your Soul Map. Or you can click on the link below that my staff has provided. You guys rock. You guys have a, a great day. By the way, don't forget to share this video, please, on all your social media platform, whatever you're watching me, by what means, I want you to share this video. It's vitally important we, under, we understand how to create our future. They don't know unless you tell them, right? As the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. So make sure you guys are all, please, sharing this video to your social media platform and comment below. Let me guys, let you guys know, you know, uh, let me know what you guys, uh, how you like the website. Also, if you truly like this and something, uh, I want you guys to know. If you truly like the Facebook's Identity Network page, do me a favor. While you are on Identity Network's Facebook page right now, I want you to give us a rating, please. If you can give us a five star on the Facebook, please do. Yeah, we've sold out, Rachel. Like, there's nothing like, like left. Like, look, I have nothing to even show you guys as, as a sample. And thank God it's going to come in tomorrow. So you guys order now. You'll be the first one to ship on this next, next, next order. But do me a favor. Go right now on your Facebook Live Identity Network page. Please, if you guys love me, give us a five-star rating, please. It helps us out on Facebook. It also helps sort of push us more uh, up there on the ladder uh, for people who are searching. So give us a five-star on Identity Network's uh, Facebook uh, page and give us five-star and write a comment like maybe you love my books, you love me, you love the ministry. Whatever has touched you, put it in the comment section. It would be an honor to me if you guys could do that, all right? I love every one of you. Do Give us a five-star now. Order Creating Your Soul Map combo and the link below. Have a blessed day. Don't forget to share it. Talk to you guys soon.